Hey folks, and here, keeping your car healthy and running well requires some basic maintenance throughout the year, and those trips to the shop can add up quickly. There are a few basic things you can do in your own garage that will prevent future issues and save you some coin. We at Bumper have put together a list of eight maintenance jobs and car repairs that you can and should do yourself, regardless of whether or not you're experienced tinkering under the hood. So buckle up and let's explore. One of the easiest things you can do yourself is to top off or refill your wiper fluid. When you're running low on this inexpensive cleaner, just pop the hood and look for the reservoir, which is usually topped with a blue cap. Unscrew and pour. Boom, money saved. Almost as easy as replacing the wipers themselves. If you notice they're not working as efficiently as they used to, hint they should be wiping away and not smearing, it's probably time to swap them out with new ones. Shouldn't take you more than a few minutes to make the switch. The old ones should just pop off or slide right off. Give it a try. One of the most critical maintenance jobs that you should learn to do yourself is checking and changing your oil and oil filter to keep your engine running smoothly. How often you should do this depends on the kind of oil you use. To check your oil, park on a flat surface and wait a few minutes after turning off the car. Pop the hood, locate and pull out the dipstick and wipe it clean, then dip again. Check the markings on the dipstick to see where the oil level line should sit. If you're low, top or up, but make sure to know which kind of oil to use. Check your owner's manual. You also want to make sure your oil is clean because dirty oil can cause clogs and end up damaging your engine, which can cost thousands of dollars to fix. If it's time to change the oil and replace the filter, you'll need to jack your car up to do so. Take off the fill cap under the hood and get under the car to drain the old oil into a pan. Replace the drain plug. Pull out the old oil filter and let that drain into the pan as well. Wet the new gasket on your filter with a little oil and screw it on making sure it's sealed properly. Fill up with the recommended amount of new oil, then start your engine for a short time. Then check your oil level with the dipstick and look for any leaks. Finally, make sure to dispose of your old oil responsibly. ATF serves as a coolant for removing parts. Hydraulic fluid to make internal components function is designed. It helps with gear lubrication, brake band friction, and valve operation. It's as vital to your car as motor oil, and topping off your transmission fluid is another easy DIY. To check your fluid level and quality, locate your vehicle's dipstick if it has one. To change it, open the fill plug first, then the drain plug to get rid of the old stuff. Then fill up with new fluid. For more details, check out our video that's dedicated to the subject. The link is in the description below. Coolant is a mixture of water and antifreeze that circulates in the cooling system, primarily as a heat exchanger between the engine, where it picks up heat, and the radiator, where it sheds heat to the outside air. Checking and replacing coolant is another vital element to maintaining your car, and it's a pretty easy thing to do yourself. The easiest way to check your antifreeze is to look at the level in the overflow tank. If it looks low, top it off with more fluid. If the fluid looks cloudy or discolored, it's time to change it. If you're unsure of the condition of your antifreeze, grab a cheap coolant tester available for less than $5 from any auto parts store. Unscrew the radiator cap, drop in the tester's inlet hose, and drop a small amount of coolant. The arrow will display the antifreeze's boil over and freeze protection levels. To find out more about changing the coolant and flushing the system, head on over to our handy DIY video, link is in the description. Before we get to the rest of the list, could you do me a favor? If you click that like and share button below, it helps with the algorithm and more folks will get a chance to see this video. Thanks. As one of the most overlooked maintenance items, if the cabin air filter isn't replaced regularly, noxious fumes, pollen particles, dust, or harsh airborne chemicals can and will enter your vehicle cabin. A dirty air filter can also put an unnecessary strain on your ventilation motors and system and can eventually lead to a wrecked air compressor, a very expensive problem indeed. Your cabin air filter is super easy to change yourself and a new one generally costs under $50, so there's really no excuse not to do it. Check your manual for detailed instructions on where your filter is located, but generally you'll find it located behind the glove compartment. You can check out our own detailed video on how to swap out the filter, or you can just follow these easy steps.
what your cabin air filter does for your lungs and engine air filter does for your cars. It lets air through while preventing debris and dirt from getting into your engine, which can cause an automotive version of asthma. Luckily, replacing an engine air filter is not much more difficult than changing the one in the cabin. Though the procedure may vary depending on the kind of vehicle you have, the filter is generally found under the hood in a rectangular housing held in place with some screws or clips. Take the top off the housing and swap out the old filter for the new, making sure the configuration is the same. Then, breathe easy. Does anything sound worse than being stuck at the side of a road with no cell service and a flat tire? Newer vehicles will more often than not come equipped with an emergency tire inflation kit and patch instead of a spare. But still, it's important to know how to change a flat. You'll be grateful for the amount of money you'll save on a tow truck and time saved waiting for one to arrive. Make sure you follow these steps when changing your tire. Put on the emergency brake or block your rear wheel so your car doesn't roll. Loosen lug nuts with your tire iron while the tire is on the ground. Fit your jack into the notches located under the car and jack it up. Unscrew the nuts and remove the tire. Replace with the spare and tighten the nuts using a lug wrench in a star pattern. Regularly rotating your tires extends their life and ensures even wear. Knowing how to do it yourself can also save you some money. You will need a pair of jack stands, but otherwise you can use the same tools for changing a tire. Consult your owner's manual to determine the pattern you should use to rotate the tires and check out our video to find out more about how often you should change your tires. Link is in the description. Is there any more disconcerting automotive experience than rushing out the door to get to work and realizing your car's battery is dead? As long as you know how to jumpstart a car, you shouldn't ever be late for that morning meeting. It's a good idea to keep a jumper kit, or at least jumper cables, in your car at all times. Always be prepared, right? If you don't have a jumper kit, you'll need a car with a working battery, so be prepared to phone a friend, neighbor, or good Samaritan. To get your motor running again, attach the cables to your jump kit or the working car's battery and to your car's battery. Have a sip of coffee and wait a bit to get your battery charged up enough to turn the engine over. Five minutes should do it. Then turn the ignition. Your car should purr to life like a happy kitty. What kind of car maintenance do you do yourself? Drop us a line in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content.